Say hello, Ellie. Hello. So one thing, Warren, I feel like this spot is maybe, you know, definitely more room for people to come than the uh, Pier 19. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Wanted to talk about something different. Let's talk about how to visit Starbase, Texas. If you look at this map here, you can see the United States. And in the southern center of it, you can see this red pin, which marks Brownsville, Texas. It's the southern tip of Texas. It's one of the southernmost points in the United States. This is a place that you would go to if you want to see Starbase. If you want to see the place where Elon Musk and SpaceX are building the future rocket, the Starship Super Heavy system that will greatly lower the cost of bringing payloads into orbit from $1,000 a kilogram into low Earth orbit to maybe $20 or $10 a kilogram into low Earth orbit. It could become cheaper to mail a kilogram into orbit than to mail a kilogram from New York to London. It's that dramatic of a change in launch capability. And not only does it enable launching payloads into low Earth orbit at low cost, which will make Starlink very, very, very strong financially because Starlink flies in low Earth orbit, but it will enable humanity traveling to the moon, setting up a base on the moon. It will enable humanity traveling to Mars and building a colony on Mars. And from Mars in particular, once we've established a self-sustaining colony on Mars of a million people or so, and we start manufacturing there, it will become even more possible to explore the rest of the solar system and maybe beyond the solar system. Mars is a great base for traveling beyond because Mars has a lower gravity, a smaller mass, smaller gravity well, so it's easier for rockets to get off Mars and go places further out in the solar system than to come from Earth's large gravity well. So that's why all this matters, but I wanted to talk about this map for a second. When you look at this map, you see the southern tip of Texas, it's not that easy to get to. Um, it's not hard to get to, but it's not as easy as you might think. It's not a major city. Brownsville is a small city. It's a small airport. As far as I know, only two major airlines fly there, American and United. The flights come from Dallas and Houston. So pretty much coming from anywhere else in the United States, you have to connect by flying through Dallas and Houston. You can see it a little closer here. The pin is over here and you can see the lower United States. You you can see Las Vegas off on one side. You can see Miami on the other side. And New Orleans is right above my head. You can see San Antonio and Houston are still quite a ways. It's about a six hour drive, I believe from San Antonio, maybe seven hour drive from Houston. It's maybe an hour flight to each one. So I flew there from Fort Lauderdale or West Palm Beach and connected I forget which city and then connected down and when i flew out to los angeles i flew to austin first and i to get to austin you can't there's not even direct flights from there's not even non-stop flights from austin i had to fly to houston to go to austin so driving it's a long drive flying it's a little bit of extra effort it was not an expensive flight i think i flew for about 120 dollars and that was on a cheap well that wasn't even that's a regular airline for about 120 dollars so that's just how you get there. Now, obviously, if you're in Mexico, I suppose it's easier. I don't have a lot of viewers in Mexico. Um, if you want to drive from a greater distance, it's quite a drive. And I'm sure there are superchargers on the way. I know people have driven there in their Teslas, but it's, it's quite a journey to get there. And that's the first step is just getting to Brownsville. Now, once you get to Brownsville, I wanted to give you a sense of the area where Brownsville is, where Starbase is, and what's around it. So on the left side of this image, or towards the left side of this image, you see Brownsville in a red sort of oval, and that's just over Matamoros. And one thing to be clear, all of this is right basically at the Mexican border. Mexico is right there. Starbase is like two miles from the Mexican border. Starbase, the launch pad, you can see orbital launch pad on the map. That is basically on the beach. That is about a two-mile drive down the beach from Mexico. And there are a bunch of other things I wanted to go over on this map with you. Up above, you can see South Padre Island in like a yellow oval. South Padre Island is a resort town. There's a lot of hotels. There's a lot of Airbnbs. There's a lot of restaurants. Then just to the southwest of that, you can see Port Isabel, which is a smaller community that also has some Airbnbs. I don't remember if I saw any hotels in Port Isabel. These are two places that are common for people who are visiting Starbase to go to. They stay there and you can see launches pretty well. You see the red star 
underneath South Padre Island. There is a spot, a basically a park at the southern tip of South Padre Island. There's an RV park there, and there is a viewing area that is pretty large. And so a lot of people can gather there and watch launches from there. And it's not very far. It's a pretty good spot to watch launches from. I'm going to tell you one closer later in this video. That's a different experience, but I just wanted you to see that. The other critical thing about South Padre and Port Isabel is even though they're close for viewing they're, and they're close in absolute distance, they're far in terms of driving there. What you'll see to the, where you see near Brownsville, there's a red star above Reed Hope King. That red star is the point where you have to turn around. So this is South Padre Island. This is the viewing area. That's a good spot to view from. There is one, at least one other spot you can see well from. And this is Port Isabel. To get from South Padre, which is probably the most common place people stay, to Starbase. This is the manufacturing site and this is the launch pad. To get from here to here, you have to drive on this road through Port Isabel all the way down this road and you turn around at the Red Star and then you come down Boca Chica Boulevard to get there. So it's a long trip. It's an hour to get there. Now, it's not an unpleasant drive. There's some good restaurants over here in this part of Brownsville. Brownsville itself is a nice town. Uh, we walked around Brownsville. I went and visited Starbase with Ellie from the channel Ellie in Space. Uh, wonderful time with her. She's very professional, great journalist. Learned a lot from her. We had a great time together. So the other critical spot I want you to be aware of is this purple star here. This purple star is probably the best viewing point for seeing launches. This is where the launches are. This is uh, where Rocket Ranch has their viewing location. I'm going to talk about Rocket Ranch in a minute. This is the other spot. It's about three and a half miles from Rocket Ranch's viewing location. The southern tip of South Padre is probably more like four or five miles from the launch pad. Still very close. Still a great view. Still, honestly, probably a better view than most views you'll get at Canaveral of launches. So this is a great spot as well. But if you want to visit Starbase... This is the viewing location for Rocket Ranch, and the place where you stay when you're at Rocket Ranch is over here, which I'm going to show you on another map in a minute. So this is just to give you a broad brush picture of the larger area. Brownsville, Brownsville Airport is not far from the end of Boca Chica Boulevard, so you fly in here. You might stay in Brownsville. Some people choose to stay in Mexico. It's apparently very inexpensive to stay in Mexico. One of the things I didn't look at is what is the possibility of going to Mexico to watch launches because... This spot here is the southern side of the Rio Grande and the Mexican border with the United States. And this is really, really close to the launch site. Now, I don't think it's safe to watch launches from this location. But somewhere along the beach in Mexico, there's probably reasonably good viewing spots that are far enough to be safe. You don't want to be too close to a launch in case something blows up. Just to be clear, even at three and a half miles away, Rocket Ranch's viewing location, you need ear protection because if something blows up, and they have a shelter to go into if something blows up. You got to be careful. So um, it is conceivable that you could go to Mexico. You could stay in Mexico cheap. Supposedly it's a lot cheaper to stay there. I heard the Mexican food is even, even though the Mexican food is great in the Brownsville area, I heard the Mexican food is even better in Matamoros. And so maybe there's a theory that you go to Matamoros and you watch launches from this side. But I, I'm not covering that in this video. I didn't explore that. Um, I think it's an interesting approach, but I just don't have any answers for that. The Rocket Ranch viewing location is right on the Rio Grande. The Rocket Ranch place where you stay is right on the Rio Grande. And you can see Starbase itself is really, really close to the Mexican border. Um, this, I guess this looks farther than it is. This is like, it's literally like a five minute drive. And there, you know, the spots here, there's spots where the border is just really, really close. You can see here, Boca Chica Boulevard is basically right on the Mexican border, right at this spot. And even at this spot, the Mexican border is really close. So um, kind of striking being someone who grew up in America and never really got that close to the Mexican border. Now seeing it like, wow, OK, you're, I was right on the Mexican border multiple times. I was right on the Rio Grande multiple times. Very, very interesting. We're on a, on a bend. We're actually in a very unique spot where we're south of Mexico. So this is the Rio Grande and that's Mexico, which is north oh, of us, no shit. which is weird. Time. No, it's OK. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty normal. So that's, that's a legit Mexican ranch across, this, across the river. Yeah, it's Mexican. I was literally on the Rio Grande on a, on a boat briefly. So a lot to see here. I just wanted to show you a little closer on the map. This is South Padre Island. The, there's a hotel. I want to say it's Prince, but I don't think that's the right name. There's a hotel right here. Maybe it's called Sapphire or something like that. That's 
pretty close to this park at the southern tip. There's an RV park here at the southern tip, and this red star is the viewing spot where you can watch launches from. And there are other spots along here where you can watch launches from. Port Isabel, another spot where you could probably do Airbnb. Some of the Airbnbs have a view to the south. Like they have a patio and you can look out to the south and then you would have a really good view from there as well. That's a pretty casual place. It's a little closer drive. You know, it's maybe a five or 10 minute closer drive from Port Isabel to get to Starbase than it is from South Padre. South Padre is the fun place to be with the restaurants, the bars, the nightlife. There is some nightlife and stuff in Brownsville itself as well. This is the Brownsville area over here. This is the spot where you turn around, you get off the highway here, you drive across, and then you come back down Boca Chica Boulevard to get here. Rocket Ranch is over here. Rocket Ranch's viewing location is here. This is the main manufacturing location for Starbase. And then this is the launch area for Starbase. And the beach is right here. Literally, you drive past the launch area and you're on the beach very quickly. And there's also, I should mention there, when you're driving out from Starbase, there's a certain point, I forget exactly where, where there's border control. There's a border control checkpoint and it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. And you can see the airport down here. This is the airport. When you fly in, you could just go over to Rocket Ranch. You could stay in Brownsville, which is probably less expensive than staying in South Padre. Or from the airport, you can drive out to Port Isabel and to South Padre. And there's plenty of places to stay on South Padre as well. South Padre, I think, is particularly crowded on spring break and maybe on the winter holidays, other you know, Christmas break. Other than that, I didn't find South Padre was that crowded. I think it's actually relatively not busy. I suspect when we know a launch is going to happen, South Padre is going to get crowded. So these are some thoughts. I'm going to show you a little bit more next. I just wanted to go a little closer in to show you just a little bit more. So again, this is the southern tip of South Padre Island. There's an RV park in the middle here, and this is the viewing area that we were at. There's another spot over here. There's a restaurant that Ellie and I went to, uh, like a diner for we had breakfast at. And there's a spot here where you could get a decent view not really much further than the southern tip of South Padre. You still get a great view, and maybe it's going to be less crowded. There's like a boat launch, and I think people park there to, to launch boats. And so there's, there's a spot that may be a little less crowded. This is the spot in Port Isabel where you might have the best viewing. There is a lighthouse here. I kind of wonder if it would be interesting to watch a launch from the top of the lighthouse. That might be an interesting spot. Still not very far. All of these locations, people who are at Canaveral, when you go to Canaveral to watch the launch, you are often much farther from the launch site than you are here at South Padre and Brownsville. So, and this gives you a closer scale. Rocket Ranch, you can see on the map right here, is literally on the Rio Grande in this little nook where the Rio Grande sort of winds around. This is the Mexican border, the Rio Grande and Rocket Ranch. Rocket Ranch is like you come down Boca Chica Boulevard, which is a decent road, and then you go on this gravel road for like three miles kind of out of the way to get to Rocket Ranch, which is sort of on the edge of or in a state park, something like that, some kind of state or national park. And from to get from Rocket Ranch to Rocket Ranch's viewing area, which is over here, Rocket Ranch actually has a boat that will take you along the river to get to it, when the, which is really useful when the road is closed. When they're getting close to a launch, they close the road, but they can't close the Rio Grande. The Rio Grande is international, so they can't really close the Rio Grande. So... There are windows of time when the road is closed, but the, the river is open and you can get there on their boat. And that's a special thing for people who stay at Rocket Ranch. I was a really big fan of that experience. It's not for everyone, but just to give you a sense, if you really want to get close to watch launches, working with Rocket Ranch is the best way. Still very good to see launches from the southern tip of South Padre, from Port Isabel or other parts of South Padre. And even honestly, from almost anywhere, there's, there's no hills. It's flat, so you're going to have a great view from almost anywhere. Well, the last thing I want to talk about is what you're going to do at Starbase. The first and most obvious thing is if there's a launch, you go there to watch a launch. That's a lot of what I've talked about so far. But there's something else that's really special that you can do when you visit Starbase if there is no launch in particular, which is to go and see Starbase. You drive down Boca Chica Boulevard. You see the manufacturing site. You see the launch site. You can't really go in. Maybe there's a little bit of an exception for the manufacturing site, but I don't want to dive into the detail there. Pretty much from the roadway, you can get a good idea of what's happening at the manufacturing site and at the launch site. You can pretty much see almost everything that's happening. There's some stuff that's happening behind closed doors or in a tent. You can't really get a good view of it, but it's pretty much out in the open and it's pretty impressive. 
And for me, this is that moment where you realize what Elon was talking about when he said you have to innovate with extreme urgency. When you look at the pace of operations at Starbase, when you talk to the, the contractors who are working 12-hour shifts seven days a week, when you talk to the SpaceX employees, and we did talk to one or two, that they are working incredible hours. They're working 15, 16, maybe more hours a day, just really, really working hard because there's a mission. And it's this thing about Elon is that he establishes there's this mission that we're trying to achieve. And we're going to get to this mission by working really, really hard. And you find a mission that people are really motivated about, like establishing a colony on Mars, getting to Mars, establishing a colony on Mars, saving the world from climate change or from pollution and, you know, delivering electric vehicles in a compelling way curing brain diseases, eliminating soul-crushing traffic. He identifies this really compelling mission and he recruits people and gets them on the mission. He leads by working insane hours and they feel compelled to work particularly long hours. And he hires veterans. Veterans are used to working long hours for crappy pay. Then they come to work for SpaceX and they work long hours for really good pay and their mission is more clear and more compelling than the missions they might have had in the military. And there's a, a bonding, I think, that the SpaceX employees go through. They're working really hard together for really long hours. Read the book Liftoff if you want to get a sense of that by Eric Berger. Great book about the early days of SpaceX getting through the Falcon 1 launch. Really, really compelling. It's really special to see that. Other things to see, hey, it's the southern tip of Texas. Check out that beach. Go down to the Rio Grande there. Check out Rocket Ranch. Call them ahead. You, you don't just show up. You want to call Rocket Ranch ahead. Check out Rocket Ranch. Consider staying there. And there's a couple tips there about Rocket Ranch and about going to Boca Chica and to the Starbase. You're in the middle of nowhere. Yes, Starbase is there. Yes, Rocket Ranch is there. But once you're like visiting Starbase, you can't use the restrooms at Starbase. You're basically peeing in the dunes. So go to the bathroom before you go. And... Be prepared to take a leak in the dunes or do whatever you got to do in the dunes if you got to. Go over to the beach, walk from the beach towards Starbase and you can get closer, you get a different angle on it. It's really, really special to see all the crazy stuff that's going on there. Um, talk to people. Check out the community. Check out Brownsville. It's a special little town. Uh, great restaurants. The Mexican food, the barbecue is amazing. There's a lot of other little things to see. We only explored a little bit of the Brownsville area. There's a lot to see there. Maybe even go out to McAllen, Texas, which is about an hour away. That's where SpaceX tests the rockets. I don't know if you're going to get to see anything there. We didn't go there. You can check out the beach. You can check out the nightlife on South Padre. You can check out the nightlife in Brownsville. We checked out both. It's fun. There's a lot of fun stuff to do there. And if you can, go with someone like Ellie. Ellie is wonderful. All professional. Nothing untoward happened. But she's a fun person to be with. Please check out her channel, Ellie in Space. Without her, this, would, this video wouldn't have been anywhere near as good. I learned a lot from her. So if you like this video, please check out my other videos. Please support the channel on Patreon. Thanks to the Vasa Law Firm in Sweden and all my Patreon supporters for helping the channel grow. Check out the merchandise on elonbits.com. The Starship t-shirt is particularly appropriate for this video. And of course, the Elon stainless steel water bottles. Um, check out my channel, The Daily Lie, on Locals. And thank you so much for watching.